Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, I want to show you how a one-knob audio compressor works. A one-knob audio compressor is increasingly common in small analog audio consoles like the one in front of me today. Now, in order to demonstrate how this compressor works, we're going to show you how it works on a digital audio console, and then we're going to take what we learn over there and bring it back to this one-knob compressor and show you how it works by reducing all the factors that are in play on a digital audio console to a single knob on this analog audio console. Before we do that, we need to talk a little bit about what does an audio compressor do. So an audio compressor narrows the dynamic range of an audio input. What does that mean? Basically, it means that we need to make the quiet things a little bit louder. We need to make the loud things a little bit quieter. We're squishing that dynamic range into a smaller window. An example of this would be a kick drum. We want the kick drum to sound the same all night. So what we do is we compress the heck out of it so that as the drummer tires or the drummer gets excited, the kick drum sounds the same and it sits the same spot in the mix the whole night. On the opposite end, you have something like a vocal mic. Vocalists will have a large dynamic range that they want to show off. That makes it pretty hard to put into a mix sometimes, so it can be helpful to compress that dynamic range just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it and flatten them completely, but you need to make it practical so it can sit into a range inside your mix. So that's what we're trying to do. Again, if we go to the opposite spectrum of that, we have something like a podium mic. Generally, a podium mic doesn't need a lot of dynamics, and you don't necessarily want to be chasing it with volume throughout the entire presentation. So a compressor is helpful in narrowing that window to make sure that if the podium presenter backs up or gets really close to the podium mic, that the volume of that audio input stays relatively the same and your guests can hear at the same level throughout the presentation. So that's what we're gonna show you today. So next we're gonna kick over to a digital audio console so I can show you how a compressor works. Okay, so here we are with our digital audio console. What we have today is we have a Shure SM58 plugged into this audio console. So you should be able to hear everything that I'm doing and you'll hear what those changes sound like. So what we have here at the digital audio console is we have five different variables at our disposal. We have the threshold, the ratio, the gain, the attack, and the release. Now with the Yamaha one knob compressor, the attack and the release are fixed at 25 milliseconds and 300 milliseconds respectively. So what that compressor is doing is that those are staying fixed and these three variables are moving here. So on the threshold, the threshold on the Yamaha one knob compressor moves between 18 decibels all the way down to negative seven. So as you can see, as we dial this down, we're gonna look up in the top right hand corner and we see that this threshold of the knee there, that the bend is moving up and down. So it comes all the way down to negative seven. So what that means is any audio that comes and crosses that threshold, you can see there, then it gets squished by the compressor. That's what that knee or that bend there is showing. And what that bend is controlled by is the ratio. So on a Yamaha compressor, it can go all the way from one to one when the compressor is turned off, and it goes all the way down to four to one. So as you turn that compressor up, anything that goes past this threshold will get squashed four to one. And anything in the middle, so if you have that one knob compressor at halfway, it'll be squashed at a rate of two to one. But that squash only happens when the compressor kicks in. You can see here that red bar that comes down as I speak louder, you can see it kick in there. So that ratio of compression will only kick in once the threshold is exceeded on the audio console. So that's how it brings the dynamic range down. Now we also said that a compressor will increase the things that are quiet. And how it does that is it simply just adds gain to the channel. As we increase this gain, so when a compressor is full on a one knob compressor, it adds seven decibels of gain. That's what this second arrow is demonstrating here. So that will make the quiet things a little bit louder. You should have heard this microphone just get seven dB louder as I added that gain. So we can see here when the compressor is off, uh, you won't be able to hear the difference. I'm just showing you right now. So when the compressor is off, it'll have a threshold of 18 decibels, means it wa it's wide open there. There's a ratio of one to one, and the gain is set to zero. 
when that compressor goes full bore, like we have with the microphone that's plugged in, the threshold comes all the way down to minus seven. The ratio goes four to one, which means that's compressing four things for every one that it leaves at regular volume. And then the gain, so the low, the quiet sections are brought all the way up by seven dB. And the attack and the release are at 25 and 300 milliseconds there. Now the attack and the release there are quite slow. And that's just showing you that Yamaha is trying to have like a slow buffer. They don't want to hear the compressor slamming. They just want to round everything out. So that's how an audio compressor works. And specifically, those are the variables that are plugged in to the Yamaha one knob compression. So now we're gonna undo this and then we're gonna go back to the Yamaha console. We'll plug into there and you'll be able to hear how that sounds. Okay, so we're back with the Yamaha MG10XU and now we're gonna hear how this sounds. So as we increase this one knob compression, we're gonna expect to hear that threshold come down so it won't let things get louder without compressing them. And then we're gonna hear that ratio so it's gonna get more aggressive on the compression. But on the flip side, we're going to hear seven decibels of gain come in on the low end to boost everything. So we're going to expect to hear it get louder as we turn it up and in a much smaller, more compressed dynamic range. So let's go ahead and turn that up now. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Te test, test, test. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. You should really hear the compression kicking in now as we go up to 10 because this does have a massive effect on gain as well so we're all the way up at 10 now now we're going to come all the way back down to five the compressor is sitting right in the middle right now and now we're going to roll it all the way off again we're going to hear how this sounds compared to where it was when it was at half and when it was at full so i hope this video has been helpful i hope you have a better understanding of how that one knob compressor works to me when i'm using the one knob compressor i generally don't take it up past half just because it has that factor of adding so much gain but also if you plan on using the compressor with your audio channel here it's important to factor that in when you set your gain on the channel because if you add a compressor that will also affect your aux outputs your effects and everything else that that channel is interacting with because it adds gain to the whole channel so that's important to keep in mind as well if you can't hear a difference if you don't see a big benefit of this then generally less is more just don't use it if it's not effective in what you're trying to achieve but again for me as a general rule i never take these compressors up past half i'm generally somewhere around here uh, which is like the 11 o'clock to 10 o'clock position on the compressor hope this video has been helpful if you want to see more videos like this in the future please like and subscribe if you want to see pricing or specs of anything that you've seen in this video please check out the links in the description below and if you have any questions please leave a comment in the comment section below thank you so much for watching